Let's go for it. Ooh. Amazing. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Monday night call. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to spotlight myself because why not put yourself in the spotlight and then I'll put you back to back to you, Eric. So um, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited for this Monday night call. I know so many of you have um, spoken about Teamsy and lots of people, the word's starting to spread and people are getting so much from it but I also know that this is myself included as well I know that I'm not getting the most out of it and really if we're in this business for the long game and we're in it because we really want to you know change our life and have a massive impact we really need to start treating it like a business and a tool like this is just absolutely incredible for it because the follow-up don't know about you guys but um the follow-up is not one of my strongest skills and teams is amazing for that so um in the call today we are so i'm so excited to have eric on this call training us um he is you're the founder aren't you eric yes that's that's big time that's big time stuff. Amazing. I'm so excited. So we're going to be learning literally from the founder, the man who created this platform. And we're going to be learning all about how to follow up so that you never lose people throughout your funnel. I don't know if you ever see people pop up on Instagram or social media and you're like, oh God, I was meant to message that person like years ago. Um, so you're never going to fall through that. You're going to be able to connect with more people in 30 minutes than ever before. And you are also going to be able to just bring everyone together and follow up. This is the best bit. Follow up with people without being naggy, without feeling like, hello, yoo-hoo. Have you looked at my thing yet? Do you want to join my team yet? I don't know if anyone else feels that ick. But um, yeah, I'm excited to learn about how to do that without having the ick. So I'm going to pass over to the wonderful Eric, who's going to be going straight into the training. And one thing, actually, I'm going to ask you a question because I've had this question from lots of people um, already, is that one thing they would love to know, so if you can weave this in, is um, if and how we can bring our Instagram contacts over. That's one thing that everyone has said, oh, can you ask him that? So yeah. if at any point yeah. you can uh, cover that in your presentation, that would be amazing. Cool. Fabulous. Go for it. Well, I am excited to be here with you from sunny Southern California, practically across the entire globe, right? Um, so thank you so much for introducing and setting up this call, Carly, and, and you guys are the big time. That's why I'm here, right? So, um, all right. Let's see here. Let's remove the spotlight, even though you're amazing. There we go. Okay. So a couple of things, I'm going to go through a lot. I love that introduction. You know, one of the things that I've said is that you'll the work in this business is like drinking water through your hands, right? Have you guys ever tried to cup water and drink it through your hands? Like you lose, you drop more than you get into your mouth, right? And so a system like Teamsy makes that watertight. It makes that system watertight. So you're not wasting more than you're actually getting when you're, when you're connecting with people. But here's what I want to do tonight. I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, but I want to squeeze as much content into this time we have together as possible. So I'm going to show you guys Teamsy. We'll show you how easy it is to set it up. And I'm going to take you through the workflow of a power hour so that you can crush it, right? Um, so we'll do that. Don't worry. So some of you who are using Teamsy, you're going to learn a lot from that. Um, some of you have never seen it before. You're going to, oh my gosh, you'll probably start free trials while I'm demoing it because you're going to be excited. But before I jump into the Teamsy demo, I need to teach you a little bit about what Teamsy is, what the system is, what the philosophy is, so that you really understand why it works so well and how we do it, as Carly said, without the ick, right? <laughs> so I want to kind of take you through that just a little bit, and then we'll dive into the app. I will stay for Q&A. So for those of you who want to hang on and, and ask questions, I will be here. I'll stay as long as you have questions. Okay, so don't worry. We'll be here and we'll record all those questions too so you can get them on playback. All right, let's dive in. Uh, let's see here. I've got a presentation somewhere. Here we go. <clears throat> can you guys see my slides? Okay, great. So this is what I want to talk about. How to systemize your success with relationship marketing. Oh, wait, I got to do one thing. Hold on a second. Just unplug my other screen. Messes up the Zoom. Okay, there we go. This is the topic, how to systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. I know there's a lot there. I like long titles, so you know exactly what you're going to get. But we're going to show you the system. You can't just be good at stuff. You got to have a system. Why is it so important to have a system? It makes you consistent. It keeps people from falling through the cracks, and it allows you to duplicate. 
right? You can't duplicate your personality, but you can duplicate systems. We're going to teach you relationship marketing, which is the philosophical system behind Teamsy. And we're going to help you do it in less than an hour a day. That's how you become the power hour boss. Are you with me? Okay. Just a little backstory, because I know most of you haven't met me. Um, my name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of Teamsy. My background, though, I'm not a well, I guess I am now, but I have not been a network marketing guru. You know, I'm sure you've had some of those gurus on the Monday night call in the past. That's not me. I didn't grow up in this industry. I've been a professional business coach and consultant for 21 years. This is my 21st year, 21 years. Can you believe that? And I've been teaching people how to build a relationships based business model. Now, what happened about seven years ago, I fell into direct sales by accident. How many of you fell in by accident? be honest. Okay. So, you know, I found what happened was I found some products I loved and I was sharing because people share what they love. Right. So I was sharing the products with people because I loved them and, and everybody was, everyone I talked to pretty much was ordering them. I wasn't a distributor. My wife smacked me in the head and said, you should sign up and be a distributor because everyone you're talking to, because of your excitement is buying the products. So I reluctantly signed up. I wasn't really planning on building a big business or anything, but here's what happened. I started getting the, you know, like the, the emails and links from corporate with the comp plan. I thought, wow, this is an amazing opportunity. Now for anybody who has business background, how many of you guys have business, a business background or corporate background? Like when you look at this business model, it's a no brainer. It's like, you can have a business that can be multi-million dollar business with practically zero investment. Somebody else handles the inventory, the marketing, the, right? All the stuff is handled for you by somebody else. You just get to make all the money. This is a no-brainer, right? So I kind of dove in um, kind of on the side, little side hustle on the, in the, on the side of my consulting and coaching business. I started looking at a network marketing business. And um, the challenge that I had, and maybe some of you guys have this challenge, is I just didn't have much time left in my day. I had a full-time job you know, corporate job working as a, as a business consultant. And I have four kids, a couple dogs, right? When do you fit this in? Does anyone struggle with this? It's like, do you just stay up all night and work on it? And so I started looking at it and I thought, okay, you know what? If, if somebody hired me to consult them on this business, the first thing I would tell them to do is, well, what tools are you using to leverage your time so that you can be more effective and efficient with your time? And so I started looking around for tools and I was specifically looking for software tools and things that could help me. And here's what I found in our industry. There just, nobody had come up with anything compelling yet. Right. And so I started sketching in a little notebook and figuring out what would really help me. Um, and I took some really smart computer guys to lunch and showed them my drawings and they agreed to build it. That's kind of how teams he took off just to kind of give you guys an idea, but it was all centered. Here's a shot of my family. I just wanted to be with my family more. I, I love being a business consultant. I still do it a little bit just to keep my knives sharp. You know, I have, I've kept some clients for years, but I wanted to be with my family. That's, that was my goal. I wanted to be able to be home with them and, and experience my kids while they were little. I was in this situation where every single day I would leave for work. My kids would be in their pajamas and I would say goodbye. And when I came home, they're back in pajamas, ready for bed. Does anyone experience this? And so it's like, and then it's like, I have 20 minutes with them, but I need to go work on my business. So I wanted to create some space for myself, some income so that I could be with my family. And that's really what led me to create Teamsy. Okay. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on there. Now, let me give you a little background on what's happened with Teamsy. Uh, it's just, we just hit our six year anniversary since we launched Teamsy, which is pretty cool. Let me just tell you guys as a business owner, the best part about hitting that six year anniversary is watching people copy Teamsy and go out of business <laughs> several times through that cycle. Isn't that great? When you, we, you know, the highest form of compliment is, is what is it they say, uh, uh, I forget how you, how it's phrased, but it's like when people copy you, that's the highest form of compliment, right? But it's even more exciting when they go to business for that. Okay. But just to give you an idea of what's happened in six years, we've been able to help more than 150,000 network marketers. We are not big tech. We're not owned by angel investors. We started, we, this company started with me texting 20 people a link to check it out. 20 people I knew in the business, like check this out. And then it has spread just like it is tonight. A leader like Carly finds it, says, let me share this with my team. It looks great. And here I am talking to you guys, which is pretty cool. Now, let me give you an idea on results, average results that people have been receiving with Teamsy. Our active users are averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. 
Okay. And so that's an average result. Some of you guys will do better than that. Some of you will do that. And some of you might not do that. It just depends on what you put into it. Right. But this is average people, people using TMZ four or five days a week, doing it consistently, 21 new customers, nine recruits over 90 days. How many of you, if you multiplied that by four would say that's a pretty good year in my business? Yeah. And this is just what you're bringing in, right? These are your personal recruits and your personal frontline customers, not what those people then do. Okay. Enough background. Let's dive into the presentation. Relationship marketing. I need you guys first to get this concept. What is relationship marketing? What is relationship marketing? First of all, it's a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. Okay. It puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. There's the reason why I believe this industry has a bad reputation. Have you come across people who are jaded or skeptical guys? Seriously? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and being that most of you are from the UK, probably even more so than here in the States, right? Because we tend to be a little more Pollyanna-ish, but the point is, is that there is a reputation um, with our industry. It's because for so long, we've been taught the opposite. We've been taught to put the sale ahead of our relationship, right? And we've been taught a self-centered approach. Now, Carly, I love that you said this. I'm going to use it the whole night. So just like she says, without the ick. So what is what am I talking about? I'm talking about the traditional approach, which is with the ick, right? Which is, hey, I haven't talked to you since school, but would you take a look at this opportunity and tell me what you think? Or I'm going to send you a sample, please. You know, it's like, it's all self-centered. It's about, hey, I need to make a sale. Could you look at this for me? I need something from you. And what happens is friends and family feel like they have a target painted on their backs. They, they want to avoid us, right? With the relationship marketing, we flip that on its head. We put the people first. Also, I want you to know something. Some of you who have been trained to go for it, to go for no, and you're good at it. I want you to know that relationship marketing is not some abstract feel-good concept. We're not going to hold hands and sing kumbaya at the end of our training tonight, right? It's not fluffy. This is a proven system that we follow, always knowing what to do next. Always knowing what to do next. How many of you just want to know what to do next? <laughs> right? But if you look at something, if you look at every successful business that's duplicatable, franchise businesses, things, things like that, they have a system that they duplicate. When you're new, they say, here's the system, learn the system, here are the steps that you follow here to be successful. Does this make sense? And that's what you need in your businesses. Somebody new, they need to, it needs to be extremely clear what their next steps are, and you'll be able to duplicate and grow and grow and grow. Also with relationship marketing, this is kind of the, the core business piece. It's a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system, okay? So that's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiries into the products or services of a business. I know it's kind of like a mouthful. But you guys need to understand something. You're not just salespeople for Arbonne. You're business owners, true? How many of you are business owners? <laughs> you're all business owners. If you weren't sure, let me just tell you, you're a business owner. So you, you do more than just serve customers as the business owner. The business owner has a specific role, which is to generate leads for the business, okay? The business owner generates leads for the business. So you need to understand that you are in the lead generation business. So let me just give you an example. How many of you ever worked in a restaurant as an employee, right? So when you work in a restaurant, me too, I, I I got my more than a decade in waiting tables and bartending. Okay. So I, I think it's good training, right? Good sales training. But here's the point. When you are, when you're, when you're a waiter or a waitress, your job is to serve the customers, but the owner of the restaurant's job is to bring you customers to serve. Does this make sense? Now you guys, some of you are doing both because you're, you're the whole company, right? But you need to understand that it's not just oh, here's how I handle it. Here's how I take care of customer. You got to be doing work that brings new customers to the business, lead generation work. And I just want to say this before we move on. You can be very busy in this business without being productive. And if you're not doing work that generates new business, you're not working on your business. You're working in the business. Make sense? Okay, next slide. Big principle here. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. It's your duty. 
Okay. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So your role is to generate leads so that you can build relationships with them. Now, this is where it's, it's like, I want you guys to really understand this. I'm going to give you a bunch of concepts, but it boils down to this. It's like you meet people, you build relationships with them. Everything that we do, that's what it's designed to help us do. Make sense? And if you, if, as you collect relationships and serve this growing group of relationships, you're going to find your business grows. Okay, so let's, we'll get into the house in a second. But the reason why our focus is on relationships and not sales and recruits, the focus is on relationships and not sales and recruits is because we turn relationships into advocates by investing time providing outstanding service. Okay, what do I mean by this? I just want you guys to get this concept. Every person that you talk to, I want you to assume this goal. I'm going to make an advocate of this person. I'm going to make an advocate of this person. To be successful in this business, I'm going to create an army of advocates. An advocate is somebody who's out there in the world so excited about what you're doing that they feel compelled to share it with other people. How many of you have a few of these already? Now, imagine if you had thousands of them, right? People so excited about what you're doing, they share it with others. Now, this is a really important concept because if you want your business to really grow quickly, you need to understand something. There are people you will build relationships with that will never purchase a single Arban product and they will never join your team, but they'll still be your advocate. Does it make sense? They will bring dozens of people to your business, maybe more because they love you, they trust you, and they love the mission you're on. Now, they might just see like, hey, it's not a fit for me, but I love what you're doing. Are you with me? Um, I had, just to kind of give you guys an example, I, I, I used to do Beachbody. I don't know if you guys have heard of Beachbody. I used to do Beachbody. I don't anymore because teams, you just like blotted out the sun, which was, which was an amazing blessing. But Beachbody was primarily focused on helping people lose weight, get fit, right? And so a good friend of mine was an Olympic athlete, incredible fitness level, right? And people would say to her, how do I get fit? How do I get to be like you? And she's like, you don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to my friend. Like, you're not at this level. You need to go over here, right? So she was constantly sending me people. She didn't want the products. She was like, I don't need that. But she constantly said, are you guys with me? This is so important because I feel like I have not heard another trainer in this industry that is teaching people to build relationships with the ones who say no. They tell them to throw them over their shoulder like a dead body and keep moving, right? The whole go for no concept is the most self-centered thing in the world. It's like, go for no's, man, just go for no's. Just ask them, ask them, ask them. When they reject you, you move on to the next one. It's like, oh my gosh, I would be single with no kids if I moved on when my wife rejected me the first time, or second time, third time, fourth time, fifth, right? <laughs> right? Are you guys with me? Anything worth doing is not something that's immediately obvious a lot of times. How many of you took a while before you got excited and joined the team? How many of you were pursued for a long time? Right? So, and how many of you have been tossed aside by a friend or family member who you weren't interested in their thing? You never heard from them again. So this is so important. I just want to get this concept. I know I'm kind of taking a lot of time on this because I want you guys to get this concept. It's about building relationships. It's about building advocates and you're going to get great results. I'll show you how to translate this into results in your business in a minute. But if you understand that as I'm talking to you, it's about this relationship, this relationship is valuable and there's going to be huge dividends for the business as well as personal dividends, having this relationship. But if you say, no, I'm not really interested in Arbonne, I'm not going to drop you. It's like, okay, that's cool. So let's continue building this relationship. Let's continue building our friendship. Does this make sense? And you will, you'll be amazed at the doors that will open. Okay, next. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. I like to say it like this. If you're a jerk, this ain't going to work, right? People need to be able to trust you. Now, some of the, some of the traditional approaches that I'm kind of thrown under the bus here tonight, it, the reason why is because they violate trust. The reason why they make me feel icky it's because they violate trust. They're disingenuous, right? Now, there's a whole spectrum in our industry of people who are completely dishonest and misleading to people who have great hearts, but they follow systems and techniques that feel just a little, they're a little bit in the gray area, right? So I want you to know that you don't have to do any of that. The most effective way to build this business 
the most effective way to build this business requires 100% true authenticity. Isn't that cool? Anyone excited about this? So when you've seen somebody get up there on stage, or you've seen a YouTube video from a top producer, somebody who's built a huge business, and they said, you just got to do it like this. This is how I did it. It doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. I just want you guys to know that there is a way to do this with being 100% authentic. And that's what I'm going to teach you about tonight. Here's the good news. Trust makes the work fun. Look, when, when somebody trusts you, you don't have to convince them. You don't have to sell them. You get right to helping them. That's why we're here, right? Is to help. Yes. Also, trust removes the ickiness from the sales process. That's what I call it the ickiness. It removes the ickiness. When there's trust, there's no ickiness, right? When people trust you, it's all good. How many of you have had people that are just like, I don't even, you don't even have to describe it. Tell me what I need to order. I trust you. If you're representing it, I know it's great, right? And that's where we want you to get. And then you get to go for yes. Instead of going for no, looking for rejection, you know, trying to get rejection out of the way to get to a yes, you're building yeses with relationships. You're building yeses, right? So it's like, yeah, people aren't going to be interested the first time you talk to them about it. And that's normal. That's normal, right? So we're going to invest. We're going to be working on relationships. Over time, we'll get to yeses. Okay. So let me just give you something. I want to leave you with some practical tips that you can use, whether or not you guys jump into Teamsy, though, I'm telling you, you're going to be excited about Teamsy in a minute when I show it to you. But I want to leave you with some nuggets. How do you build trust? If everything hinges on trust, how do you build it? So there's four things I'm going to share with you, four essential ingredients to building trust today. Number one, I'll go through them quickly and then I'll break them down for you. Number one is chemistry. Okay, chemistry. Number two is character. Okay, number two is character. Number three is competence. Competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. Okay, so chemistry is where you is chemistry is creating a connection with someone. That's it. It's just creating a connection with somebody. Where do you have common ground with them? What is it about you they can relate to? This is so important. There's a huge principle here, and that's this. People prefer to do business with a friend. People prefer to do business with a friend. You guys with me? And people don't want to do business with someone they don't like. So you got to build chemistry. It's so funny because you always see like all these movies, you know, where it's like the, it's whether it's like mafia people or like, you know, the CEOs of big companies and they're like, it's not personal, it's just business, right? Have you guys seen that kind of thing? Like, but that's not really true. It might be true for that, the, that 1% ultra elite, you know, kind of evil uh, magnate. But for us, normal people, it's not true. We wanna do business with friends. We wanna feel loved and appreciated by the people we do business with. When we go to eat in a restaurant, we want to be the owners to know us and to know our favorite drinks and have them ready, don't we? When we go into a department store, don't we love it when there's somebody who knows us that's like, oh my gosh, this, you know, something came in that I think you're going to love. I put it aside for you. I'm so glad you're here. We love it. We love to be known and to feel like friends. And this is what people want. You guys need to understand this. Building chemistry is huge. Okay, number two, character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. But just notice something, please, about this definition. Because we think character is like, you know, like I'm a person of, how many of you would say, I'm a person of good character? We think character is kind of the sum of all the good things we've done in our life, right? But I want you to understand that that doesn't matter. Character is not something you have. You can't own it. It's something you do. It's a proactive choice that you make on a daily basis, showing people how much you care through your actions. Character is a daily action. Does this make sense? And it's the center of your marketing program for your business is your character. Now think about this for a second. How many of you, it's, it's like, I feel like the whole COVID thing has really, has really revealed the raw edges of our society, right? How many of you in the past two years have decided there's companies you don't want to do business with anymore because they've revealed their character and you didn't like it? Have you guys noticed that? How strong we feel about that? And on the other, on the other side, like when you really admire character, don't you, aren't you excited to do business? So this is, this is the core of your marketing, your character, how you're showing up. And it's not just you know, taking care of customers and not letting them fall through the cracks and staying in touch, right? We're gonna handle all that with Teamsy. 
but it's also, you know, how you show up on social media. Are you selfless or selfish? You know, it's how you show up all the way throughout your life. I always tease people, you know, how do you drive your car? Are you, <laughs> are you considerate on the roads, right? Do, how many of you guys have an Arbonne sticker on your, on your vehicle? So it, that probably makes you drive a little bit with a little more consideration, right? Because you know, they're going to, they're going to be like, oh, those crazy people. So you got to, you know, it's how we show up throughout our life, throughout our day. It's really important. Okay. Number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. There's two pieces to it because there's kind of two pieces to our business. There's the bringing on customers and bringing on team members. Make sense? So the first part is, you know, like I've got a lot of choices. I mean, even right here on this call, what an amount of choices I have if I wanted to purchase Arbon products, right? Huge amount of choices. Who am I going to pick? First of all, I need to know you're competent. Do you understand your products? Do you understand the pricing? Do you understand the shipping policies? Do you know how the products can help me solve my problems? Right? That's competence. I need to know you're good at what you do. Now, if you're my cousin and I've seen your pants on backwards a few times at family weddings or something, right? Now I need to understand also that you are that you're a business person that I can trust. So how are you demonstrating your competence as a business person? How are you showing me what you're learning? Let's just be honest. A lot of us don't have that business background before we get into this business. So how are you, how are you showing up? Like we need to show people the milestones that you're learning and that you're understanding how business is built, right? So that they'll come and join you. And so it's, you know, it's again, competence is a demonstration. It's not just knowing. It's also a demonstration of it. You got to be telling the story constantly, right? And so if you're new, like if you're new, you can't say, well, I'm a, you know, national vice president, join my team. You're new, but you can show like, oh my gosh, I had a great month. And look at this really beautiful, uh, you know, water bottle that Arbonne gave me as a gift because I helped five people this month, right? Those little milestones, like share those so that people see you're making progress. And does this make sense? And it, and it really helps solidify that confidence, but you got to be showing this stuff. And then, you know, as you get more confident, as you help more people, you build swagger, you build confidence in how you can talk to people. Here's one thing I want to throw on this before I go to number four, and that's this. When you're new, though, and you don't know much, and you haven't done much, please don't pretend to be something you're not. Remember, we're talking about building trust. So you can't be fake. You got to be real. What you do, though, here's what you do. When you're new, you lean into the competence of your team. You tell their stories. Does this make sense? You explain who they'll be joining. It's not just you. It's this amazing team. It's all this experience. It's all this acumen and leadership. Make sense? So leaders, make sure that you're teaching your new people. You don't have to know all this to start. You just involve me. I will be your, I'll be your third leg. You can lean on me. Make sense? Okay. Quick principle real quick before we jump to number four. Here's the principle behind these three. And I think this will be really helpful for you guys. And it's this. Oh, I went right past it. Never mind. We'll just skip it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll go back. <laughs> I hit my computer too hard. Here we go. Here's the principle. When somebody's going to do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? This is for any business. Now, this, these aren't things that people, ask, they, they don't you know, ask these out loud. These are heartfelt questions. They're emotional. Make sense? But here's what I will tell you. If they feel strongly that all three of these are a yes, you have an advocate. You have an advocate. They love you. If they think any one of these is a no, you have somebody who will never do business with you. And they will very likely go out of their way to prevent people they know from doing business with you. Right Now think about examples in your own life where you've done business with somebody or a company that have violated your trust or made you feel like a worthless number or were totally and completely incompetent. How did you respond? right? Usually you uh, blow them up <laughs> on social media, whatever, with your relationships, right? 
I recently had a bad experience with a, with a local pizzeria. And um, anyways, I, don't, I won't get into all the details with you, but as I'm discussing the situation, the uh, proprietors were, I thought, acting pretty irrationally. So I asked them the question. I said, let me ask you a question. Is this worth losing a customer for life over? And they said, yes, it is. And I said, okay. So I went to my car, I took a deep breath. I was like, okay, no big deal. There's lots of places I can buy pizza. But guess what I did? Immediately, I, I have this text, this group text with about 50 guys that I hang out with from my church. And I texted them and I told them the story. Right? So that's what a violation of trust does to our business. It sets us back big time, doesn't it? People do this. So you need to understand that. Now, here's the other thing that where most of people will fall is they hope these answers are yes, but they don't know yet. They hope you can be trusted. They hope you care about them. They hope you're good at what you do. And now it's really up to you to prove it. Right? That's where most people live. And those are the people who will raise objections. How many of you have had objections raised? So they raise objections because they're not sure if they can trust you or if you care about them or if you're good at what you do. So the objections are an opportunity for you to help prove this to them. So can I just say this? Objections are a great thing. When people raise objections, be excited. That's somebody who cares enough about getting to the answer, whether it's yes or no, that they're asking you, giving you an opportunity specifically to talk about it. So be excited about objections, but objections also let you know you haven't built the trust yet that they need. You need to keep focusing on that relationship. All right, let's get to number four really quick because I want to get to Teamsy here. I know I've been talking a while. Has this been helpful so far though? Are you guys with me still? Okay. You can tell I'm not really a computer nerd. I, it's, to me, it's all about the heart and soul of how we do our business. The software is just to make our life easier. Does that make sense? It's just to make our life easier. Number four is consistency. Consistency. Okay, yeah, we got to do work. Sorry, consistency is where the rubber meets the road. You got to do the work consistently. All is, oh, Eric, I love listening to Eric talk. I like his philosophy. No, but we actually have to do the work, right? All of us know how to, uh, you know, be in perfect physical condition, don't we? All of us know the formula. It's about applying that knowledge consistently to get there, right? It's true in every part of our life. So we got to be consistent. You've got to be, you know, in this business, you got to be a consistent product to your product. How many of you would say you're a consistent product of your product? Yeah, good. I mean, if you're not, that's the first checkup from, from the neck up right there. It's like, you can't be successful in this business if you're not loving the products and using them. Um, social media, I believe, is a gift to us that, to really help us grow our businesses far and wide. How many of you would say you're consistent sharing your story on social media? You're out there and you're sharing. So less hands. So again, there's an area of focus. Like it's important that we do the right things, right? Consistently. Um, but the real, and, and before I get into this next piece, let me just say this about consistency. I love this principle, which is that people respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. This means that when you're consistent, not just consistent you know, in public, because so people can see you being consistent, they're attracted to you. They respect it. They want to be around it. How many of you have been doing this for a while and people say, oh my gosh, you're so inspiring. I follow you on Instagram and I'm so inspired by you or, right? And you're like, me? <laughs> Can you tell my spouse that? Because, you know, they, they were telling me I need to go, whatever, you know, but the point is, is that people are inspired by you because of your consistency. That's what's inspiring. They want to be like that. A lot of times people will join the business because they want to be part of the team, or at least they'll stick around because they love the team dynamic. They love that there's a group of people striving together to be more consistent, to be more successful. Does this make sense? So being consistent is how you become personally successful. Being consistent is the best way to build trust because nobody believes what you say. They're going to watch what you do, right? And finally, uh, being consistent is part of your marketing strategy because it attracts people to you. But I want to talk to you guys about where the consistency matters most in this business. Because you need to understand this. It, it's all about relationships. So are you as consistent with your relationships is the question. Are you as consistent with your relationships? 
And what do I mean is like, you know, staying in touch with people. Are you as consistent staying in touch with people as you are about posting on social, uh, social media, for example? Because this is where the business is done, right? Relationship building, they say, is a contact sport. And what I mean is you just got to be in regular contact with people. That's how you build relationships, just by being in contact with people. That's it. There's no secret to it. It's just about well, that is, I guess that's the secret, just being in regular contact with people. But I know your time is scarce. That's why we built Teams. It's, don't worry. We're going to make it really easy for you guys. But I want you to understand this principle, and then we'll dive into Teams. This is the big principle of the day. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. This is a really important concept. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bake it out for you for a second here before we jump into Teamsy, but... You need to get this down. Make sure if you're taking notes, write this down. Okay, just really quick. I'm going to turn off my, my presentation so I can see your faces. Um, turn your cameras on if you're decent. I want to see your faces just for, for a, a minute or two. Okay. Oh, you're, oh my gosh, your cameras are all on. Good job. You guys are awesome. It's great. I love it. Okay. Just real quick. Oh, I love seeing everyone's faces. This is great. Ah, and you see your whole faces. Yes, not covered. Beautiful thing. Okay, I'm so happy for you guys, by the way, in the UK. We follow the news here. So happy for you guys. Back to life. Okay, yes. Quick question. How many of you have ever received from somebody that you care about a handwritten, you know, like a card or a letter with a handwritten message? And when you read the message that they wrote to you with their own hand, it's like, oh my gosh, it gets me right in the heart, right? How many of you guys have received something like that? Hopefully everybody, right? If you've never received a great card like that, put your address in the chat. We'll all write you one tonight, right? We'll make sure you get one good one. Okay, but seriously, just about everybody raised their hand. How many of you have kept that card? Like you've got it somewhere stashed. You've got a secret. Okay, how many of you have lots of them? Like a pile of them somewhere. Isn't this funny? See, okay, great. Everyone's raising their hand. Great. It's amazing, isn't it, how much it means to us? Um, sometimes it's somebody we live with every day. Maybe it's a spouse or one of your kids. They write a little message. It's like, oh my gosh, the, the power of it being written down is so incredible. Now, here's another example. I've got these little postcards. Have you guys ever received? These are birthday postcards. Um, they're from my, my insurance salesperson. Do you guys ever get these from people or businesses you do business with, right? Like these little automated birthday cards. My dog gets one from the veterinarian. It says happy birthday and come in for a new measles shot or something. But the question is, everybody's nodding. Yeah, you've, been, you've received these. Did these get, get kept in the special place? How many of you kept these? Uh, a couple people have, okay. How many of you have put these in a special place along with those beloved letters and cards? couple of you. Okay, good. That's great. Nobody ever raises their hand. So you guys must have really big hearts. Most people, when they get these, they toss them right away, don't they? Now, what's the difference? The reason I'm just using this to illustrate the point. What's the difference between these postcards, which by the way, um, you can notice like the, the cards are, they look like they're handwritten, but they're not right. They're machine done. They're not even to me. It says, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Who's you? You don't know my name? And then I look down at the address and it says Johnson. So I'm like, is this for me? Is this for my wife? Like, who's it to? It's totally impersonal, right? Totally impersonal bulk mailing. Now, this isn't valued as much. And the reason why we're coming back to that principle. The first piece is, I know this required zero investment of time. Since it required no time for him to do, his, his name's Eric too, coincidentally. Since it required no time for him to send this to me, it has no value. The other piece is, because it's not personal, it's impersonal, it makes no connection. Does this make, are you guys with me? Yes. This is really important because what we're gonna teach you to use Teamsy to do is to invest time in individual people to make a personal connection. That's incredibly valuable. Now, what Teamsy lets you do is it lets you do it quickly so that it feels like a hard, it feels like a strong investment of time from the receiver's end, where maybe maybe only took you seconds on your end, but it's still a personal connection, has a deep impact. When you see other marketing systems out there, 
that say, it's automated marketing, so sexy. You just set it up, fire and forget. Have you guys heard stuff like that? This is what it feels like when it's received. This is automated marketing. Now, we happen to be in a relationships business, don't we? This is built, as my dad would say, belly to belly, <laughs> right? And so it's super important that we make those personal connections. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys receive. Thank you guys for letting me see your beautiful faces. It energized me as we keep going. Let me jump back in here real quick and we'll just finish off this screen. So there's that, there's that principle again, investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. What you need is a system to do that. How many of you are pretty good at connecting with people? So some of you are good at it, which is great, but you got to have a system, like I said, because we need to be able to duplicate it, but you have to have a way to stay in contact with all your relationships. Know when you're going to contact them, know what you're going to say to them and make sure that people don't fall through the cracks. And this is the biggest thing. People falling through the cracks is huge. I'm going to talk about follow-up in a second. All right, let me get out of here real quick. We'll stop this share. We'll jump into Teamsy. So how many of you by a show of hands are using Teamsy already? Let me see your hands. Okay, quite a few on screen one. That's great. Okay, keep them up. Okay, so we've got a bunch using it. We've got some that aren't using it, which is great. Okay, so let's dive in here real quick. Uh, where are you? <laughs> Hold on a second. I'll find it. My, my uh, Zoom wasn't picking up Chrome. There it goes. Okay. Sorry, I'm just getting over the cold. The, co the cold. Okay. Um, welcome to Teamsy. This is the Teamsy Setup Wizard. So first off, if you're not using Teamsy, go to teamsy.com. Teamsy.com. You start a free trial for 14 days. You can do everything we're going to show you for free. Okay. We won't ask you for a credit card or anything to try it out. We just want to make it easy for you to try. So you can go get started at teamsy.com. Make sure when it says choose your business, you get the the specially designed Arbonne version. So you feel at home while you're in there, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate that to you. But the first thing you're gonna see when you log in is this screen. There's like a setup process that's so easy, even I can do it. Is there anybody that's not super technical? So the funny thing is, is me, I'm not a, I don't know how software works. Isn't that funny? I have a software company, but I love using it. Like when I got, what happened was when I got my first iPhone, gosh, how many years ago was that? 15 years ago, got my first iPhone. I was like, wow, this is cool. I could just touch buttons and it does stuff. I want to build stuff like this. So I kind of got into this industry. It's got to be easy enough for me to do. And if I can do it, you guys can do it. So follow, follow through. We're going to set this up. There's just some welcome stuff, right? And then the first thing I want you to see is this, set your income goal. So what Teamsy does is it's going to take your income goal and it's going to tell you what to do. Now I know it's in dollars. Just don't worry about that. Okay. Cause it's all integer based. Just put in your number, like what's your income, what's your income need to be? Okay. So you can see my goal is 150. Now, if I slide it up or if I slide it down, okay, it changes what's in these circles. Those are my daily targets. So look, I'm going to set my goal. My goal was 150,000 for my business. This is what I want to be earning a year into the future. Okay. So you can see that at that goal, it's telling me exactly what I need to do on a daily basis. I need to reach out to nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants. So I have a specific road plan, uh, roadmap now to getting to my goal. Okay, let's hit next, keep continuing. The next thing that's really cool is you can get all your contacts into Teamsy so that they're organized in one place. No more sticky notes, notebooks, spreadsheets that you don't update, right? Forget all that stuff. Again, that's like drinking water through your hands, like we said at the beginning. Teams is cloud-based, which means it's always there. It's in your phone. It's in your computer. It's always there. You always have access to it. So you'll always be organized, right? But one of the things that Teamsy does, which is amazing, is it takes those contacts and it cycles them in such a way that nobody ever falls through the cracks. And I'll show you guys that in a second. But what you want to do when you import your contacts, if you're already, if you're already deep into the business or getting into the business, you want to import your team first, then your customers, then all of your other contacts, Okay. And you can do, uh, there's a, if you're using Chrome, like I am, there's actually a one click Facebook sync, which is pretty cool. And I know Carly, you asked me about Instagram. I'll hit, I'll, I'll explain that at the end. There's a little bit more you got to do for Instagram, but it's still pretty easy and pretty doable. Okay. So once you've got all everybody in Teamsy, you're now ready to go. It, your Teamsy is going to look like this. So here's my dashboard. I'll just show you a couple things really quick. And then I'm going to dive into how to do a power hour. It's so easy. 
okay? So just looking at, the, at this dashboard, first thing I want you to see is this big spot right in the middle where it says today's activities. So those are my goals for today. Now, what Teamsy does is it takes your goal that you set, which is a year, and it breaks it down to today. So now that I've set my goal for the year, I don't have to think about it anymore. I just need to do what I need to do today. Now, there's an important concept behind this, and that's this. If you want to have a business that's big, how many of you want to have a business that's big? If you want a business that's big, you must have a focus that's small, okay? And that's getting your daily activities done. Now, Teamsy is telling me what I need to do. I need to reach out to nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants. You can see I've got all zeros. I haven't done any work. When I say reach out to them, I don't mean send them a cheesy sales script. I don't mean send them a video from corporate and say, please watch the video and give me your opinion. I mean, seriously. I mean, I know that's in, in a best-selling book, but that's over, okay? What I mean is just reach out and say hello. Just make their day. That's it. Just make their day. And I call it the make someone's day mindset. That's where I want you to be is the make someone's day mindset. Now, look, we're going to reach out to make their day. Why? Because they respond. Right. So if you're focused on making people's day as you message them, they'll respond. When they respond, now you can actually have a conversation. Right. If you give them, if you send them a proposal, they're going to reject it and the conversation's over. Sometimes so is the friendship. Are you with me? Okay. And I'm going to take you through an example of this in a second. So we're going to reach out, as Carly would say, without the ick, making people's day just making people stay. My goal is to make nine prospects stay, then six customers, then four consultants on my team. I've also got a goal to share. My goal is three shares a day. So that's like sharing. That's when I'm sharing the business with somebody or sharing the, a product with somebody. So I'm going to be starting 19 conversations so I can share three times. Why is that? Because it's not appropriate to share on every conversation. Does this make sense? You have to build the relationship sometimes. You have to build some of the trust. You have to find out if there's an interest. And then I've got a goal to add new people to Teamsy. So those are my activities, connecting with prospects, customers, consultants, sharing the business, adding new people. Okay. That's what I want to get done every day in Teamsy. Are you guys with me? So I'm adding new pe people I hadn't thought of that I already know I'm adding to Teamsy. I'm meeting people on social media. I'm adding them to Teamsy. Are you guys with me? Okay. Here's the power hour module. Now, this is what makes Teamsy really special. There's a million softwares that are out there of this type. It's called CRM. Have you guys heard of CRM? How many of you heard of CRM? Uh, some of you have, some of you haven't. How many of you have used a CRM at work and hate using it? You can keep your hands up. <laughs> it's like the most hated type of software in the world because it's annoying for most people to use. A CRM keeps track of your contacts. It just means contact relationship manager, right? It keeps track of your contacts. It's like a giant Rolodex, if those of you old enough to remember those, or like a filing cabinet boring stuff. What Teamsy does that's special is it takes all the data you store in it and it says, here's what I need you to do today without thinking or planning, just go after it. And in this power hour module right here, it tells you who's up next to connect with. Again, you don't have to think or plan. It does it automatically. It says, okay, prospects, great. Here's who you're going to connect with. Then you go to customers. Here's who you connect with. Then consultants, here's who you connect with. Okay. And it does this based on a special algorithm that we've built in. There's a couple of things that, that, that cause this to happen. You'll notice next to Carly's name, there's a five. That's because I've ranked her five stars. So five-star people come up first, right? So as you're working through your five-star people, they're going to come up first on your list. Every time you log a connect with somebody that's five stars, they come back on your list 30 days later. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to go... Oh, do I need to set a follow-up? Don't even think about it. They come back 30 days later, okay? Four stars, which is the next rank, they come back, they come up after the fives and they come back every 60 days. They just automatically come back. You don't have to think about it. Three-star people, which most of the people that you put in teams, you will be three stars. Three-star people come back every 90 days, okay? Every 90 days, they cycle back because you're just connecting with them, building relationship, checking in. Does this make sense? Two-star people, 120 days. Is this, you guys with me? And these are the, you know, 21 years of coaching businesses, every kind of business, not just direct sales. These are the sequence, the frequencies that we found work great. Now you can customize those if you want in settings, if you want to change those, but we have them at 30, 60, 90, 120 days. Now, let me show you how this works in action. I come in to do my power hour. I always want to work left to right. Now, just real quick on this, people always ask me, Eric, but I want to start with follow-ups. Work left to right because you need to start new conversations every day. 
Okay. You need to start new conversations, every, no matter how big your business is, no matter how busy you are. If you're not starting new conversations every day, you're going to find a day in the near future where you have no conversations going. Make sense. And when you have no conversations going, you have nothing closing. So you want to start new conversations daily. Just, just get in the habit of that. So I'm going to work from left to right. I'm going to start with prospects. First person on my list is Carly. I'm going to send her a message. And remember, my goal is just to make her day. Okay. So what do I say? And this is where people, a lot of people, after we launched Team Z about a year in, people are going, man, Eric, you did a team call for my team. It rolled off your tongue. Nobody can think of what to say. So I went back and I put all my scripts that I've been using for 20 years in Team Z for you. Okay, so they're there for you. I'm going to show you how to pull those up. These are not cheesy sales scripts. They're conversational. Okay, so Carly, I'm going to message her. I'm going to go right here. See right here where I'm circling scripts. And I'm going to get, going to get a quick idea to message her with. Now, she and I connected on Facebook Messenger. So I'm going to grab the Facebook script. And you can see I've got a bunch to choose from. I'm just going to take the first one. It's here's how it reads. It says, hi, Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. Okay. So I'm going to click on copy script. And then I'm just going to paste it in here so I can edit it. So the first thing I want to do is change the name. <laughs> you know, it's so fun when you get a Jane because you're like, oh, I don't have to change the name. Her name's actually Jane, which is cool. Okay. So always put the first name in the message. So when you start a new chat with somebody, always use their first name. Little pro tip. Don't say, hey, girl, hey, hon, friend, because it sounds like this. They think, did this get sent to 300 people? Make sense? Personalize it. Um, it's so funny. Uh, I had, not that you guys, how many of you guys would leave the word awesome in the script? Yeah, see, whenever I talk to UK teams, they're like, we don't really say awesome like you. So, look, don't overthink this. Just change the word to great. Hope your day is great. Okay? Are you guys with me? Don't overthink it. <laughs> and then, you know, maybe add some emojis, whatever, to personalize this a little bit. It didn't, didn't go in there. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, it did. Just was lingering. I don't know. Whatever emojis you want. Um, you know, personalize it. Get it the way you want it. Now, now I've got it the way I want it. I didn't spend too much time on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to her. I'm going to copy this and go paste it into Messenger, which I have open right here. And I will look it up. Oh, look, we already have it active, so I don't have to look her up. But I'll just look her up. I'm going to send her this message. Okay, done. I've sent her the message. Now, this message looks simple. But this is really refined from a relationship and kind of psychological perspective. It's designed to take away that edge. Like there's no threat. There's nothing to worry. It's just light, friendly, and guarantee to send a smile. People will smile and respond back. Thanks so much. So I've sent her the message. Now I just toggle back over here to Teamsy and we're going to finish logging it. What kind of activity was it? It was a Facebook message. Log connect. Done. Now what happened was you can see I've got one done now, and this little blue circle is filling in. It's like my progress bar, right? And if I scroll down to my list, she's gone. She disappeared off my list. Just gone. Why? Because she's going to come back in 30 days. Now, if she responds to me, we're going to have a conversation. If she doesn't respond to me, I'm not going to give her a second thought. Why? Because she's back up 30 days from now. I can message her again. Sometimes people won't respond just because your message hit at a busy moment, right? But People are like, but what, shouldn't I message them again in two days and be like, did you get my message and say what? Did you see that I said hi to you two days ago? It's just weird, right? So just go with the flow and it's going to work right. The next person on my list is Jay. I'm just going to send her the same script to save myself time and mental energy. And I have it still on the clipboard. So I'll just paste it in and change the name to Jay. And I'm going to keep the emojis just as is to save myself time again. And I'm going to get cranking. See how quick I can get going? So. The reason why I have to go to Facebook to send this is because uh, Facebook doesn't allow you to send personal messages from your personal account through apps, which is no big deal. It only takes a second. So here's Jay. We're going to paste this message in and send it to her. Boom, done. Okay, toggle back over here. And if you're doing this on your iPhone or on, or on an Android phone, then you just toggle between the apps. It works the same way. Okay. So there's two done, seven left. See how the circle's filling in? So I'm going to keep working down this list, just messaging people, some simple scripts to make their day until the circle's all the way blue. And then I'm done with the daily goal for prospects, okay? Once I've done that, I come to the next list, which is customers. 
Okay, so these are all my customers. And I'm going to message them the same way. The goal is just to make their day. Now, look, I just want you guys to understand something. Well, let me just show you how easy it is. So Kathy comes up, I go to scripts. I'm going to grab a script. Now, Teamsy knows I'm in customers now. So it's going to give me a different script list, which is pretty cool. So I've got some customer scripts. Um, I like this, you know, like, hi, John, how are you enjoying the products? Now you're supposed to take out the word, the products and put in what John's ordering. Are you with me? <laughs> please don't send it with brackets, the products. Okay. Cause then it's going to look like you're not paying attention. So you send them like, how, Hey, how are you enjoying it? Right. Send me an up, please send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. It's not salesy. It's interested. Makes sense. But this will generate sales. Just so you know, it will generate sales. It's like when you go to a, a pub and they say, would you like another beer? You know, how are you doing on that beer? It's like, yeah, I want, more. you know, it's like it generates sales, but it's not salesy. It's like good service. Okay. I love this one too. Here's another example. Hi, Jing. Just checking in to see if there's some, if there's anything I can do to make your day. And this one, you know, you send this to customers that you love, you'll be amazed at the response. So just as an example, we'll copy the script in. Great. Change the name to Kathy. You guys see how easy this is? Go send the message log it in Teamsy. Now what's going to happen when I log this? Same thing. Now my pink circle is growing for customers and I'm going to work my way down my customer list. Just my goal is six a day just to make their day. Now what happens when you're talking to customers on a regular basis? You guys tune in. Some of you are getting sleepy. It's okay. I get it. It's been a long day, but listen in for a second. When you're in regular contact with customers, this is a statistical fact. I'm not making this up. They, they will order more product and they will retain longer. When you're in regular contact with customers, they order more product, they retain longer. So what happens when they get these little make someone say messages is they say, oh my gosh, I saw, the, I saw the new product line on Instagram yesterday. Your story was amazing. It's perfect timing. I was just thinking I need to connect with you, but they don't ever connect with you, do they? This is something new that's important to understand is how many times have you talked to a customer who said, I've been meaning to connect with you? And they don't. That's why we got to connect with them. So stay in contact with them and you'll be amazed. Now, what, what's going to happen right now, Carly, I hope you've been tracking numbers because when I do a team call like this, usually you'll see a 20, 30% increase in volume. Why? Because everybody's going to use, everyone's going to be using Teamsy for the next three weeks, talking to people, creating conversations, and you'll be amazed how much momentum happens. Does this make sense? Now, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to struggle through the desire to go back to your old habits of three weeks from now. Stick to this one. This makes sense. You're going to get great results. Okay, so we're going to connect with our customers, prospects, then our customers, and then our team members we're going to connect with too. We've got to stay in touch with our team members. This is amazing, by the way. This is why my company is called Teamsy. Not cheesy, not salesy, not leadsy. It's Teamsy. Because without the team, there is no business. There is no life, right? Now, a lot of people will teach you how to generate sales and recruits. I want you to understand there's something even more important and it's retention. It's retention because you can fill a bucket up all day long with no bottom and how much you're going to have, right? This, the turnover in our industry is painful. It's even painful to talk about so much so that nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. When's the last, I mean, I love you. I love you guys. I love your company. When's the last time somebody went on stage and said, let's talk about the turnover rate? <laughs> no, it's just like recruit more, recruit more. So I want you guys to know, how do you keep people? How do you keep the good people that you've recruited? The number one way, the number one glue that holds people together is relationship. When they have a relationship with you, when they know you care about them, they will stick around. We think it's money. We think it's, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and status, is, status is a strong motivator, which is why you guys have ranks and ribbons and medals and, right? and free cars and stuff because of status. But relationship is what cements people to the team. And how do we deepen relationships? Do you remember the principle? It's investing time and connecting personally. So we use Teams. We put our consultants in here, just message them from time to time, right? They come up thinking about you today. Been a while since we connected. How the heck are you? Is there anything I can do for you today? Okay. Just connecting. How many of you would be, let, let me just see. Wait, hold on one second. Turn your cameras back on real quick. Put you guys in the hot seat. How many of you, how many of you would be so excited right now 
Carly, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Are you going to forgive me for this? How many of you would be so excited if you got a personal text from Carly randomly tomorrow morning, checking in on you? <laughs> Do you see? No. Okay, great. Now, it's challenging for her because she has a big team, right? It's challenging for her because she has a huge team to start from. But how many of you guys have a handful of people on your team right now? So you can start now with teams, he's staying in touch with them, staying in touch with them, staying in touch with them. A uh, good friend of mine, and the reason why I'm telling that story, like when I was building Teamsy, I, was, I felt really strong about the consultant group in Teamsy. Nobody was doing that. I felt really kind of passionate about it, but I needed to test it. And when I was doing Beachbody, and I think Arban does this too, like you win a free vacation every year, right? They take you somewhere fabulous. You win, yeah. So, you know, I just did it. I did it for like three years, but every year I got to go on this fabulous vacation. And so my wife and I were on this cruise ship. It was like the, it's like the Royal Caribbean has these like two ships or the biggest ships in the world. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have, has anyone been on one of these? I can't remember the names of them, but it was like ridiculous. So we were on this ship and the entire ship were people in the business. Like they bought out the whole cruise. So it was pretty cool. I mean, if you ever get to go on, an, on a cruise where everyone on the ship is Arbon, like you should, that's amazing, right? So I'm walking around to the ship with my wife and just enjoying our vacation, but everybody knew me as Teamsy guys. Everyone's coming up and talking to me about Teamsy. And so um, I remember talking to somebody who had had an amazing year. She'd ranked up four times in one year. And I said, who's your upline? And she told me, and the upline was one of the top, top people in the company, kind of like a superstar, you know, like they're like rock star status. You guys know what I'm talking about? And so I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. She's your, she's your upline. She's like, yeah. And I was like, like, do you guys talk on a regular basis? And she goes, no, I mean, no, but you know, we really haven't talked since she recruited me, but if I need to get to her, I can schedule an appointment with her assistant. I said, okay, that's cool. I said, how would you feel right now? I mean, you've had an amazing year. Like, how would you feel right now if your phone buzzed and, and it was her and she just said, I just wanted you to know how proud of you I am. Like you've done, had an amazing year, you're, you're rocking it. And it was really surprising, but this woman I was talking to, like she just like broke down and just started like sobbing and crying. You guys ever have those moments where you just have like an emotional thaw? And so she started like sobbing and crying. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to like, you know, open something up. And she goes, I don't even know why I'm, I don't even know why this was my response, but it would be, it would mean the world to me. Here's the thing I want you guys to know is that you don't, don't underestimate how much you mean to your teams. This makes sense. And maybe you don't think that they think that highly of you right now, but they will if you stay in contact with them. So that's why this is an important concept. Yes, we need a prospect. Yes, we need to follow up, but we need to stay in touch with our teams too. And you know, what's funny is once you get everybody on Teamsy, you'll see messages flying that's like, you know, hey, guess what? You're number one on my Teamsy today. How's your day going? Is there anything I can do? And it becomes kind of fun, but they know that you care enough to have put them in your account and prioritize them. Make sense? Okay. All right. So far, nobody's saying to me, when is he going to stop talking? So I'm going to keep going. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go prospects, customers, consultants. That's the first half of our power hour is just sending messages to make people stay. Prospects, customers, consultants. Okay. Super easy. Use my scripts. You can bang through this quickly. If your goal was, you know, 20 people, you should be able to do that in 30 minutes. Honestly, now, it might take you longer in the beginning because you feel like you don't have the confidence to go as quick as I was, but don't overthink it. Get those messages gone. Now, the second half of the power hour is follow-ups. And I know Carly wants me to talk about this. This is it. This is where the business happens is the follow-ups. Okay. Now there's nobody there. No follow-up schedule. Follow-ups are not automatic in Teams. You have to do something to create a follow-up. Now, let me explain what I mean by follow-up because people get confused with the words. They think, oh, well, I messaged my friend who I haven't talked to in a while. That's a follow-up. No, it's not a follow-up. That's a message. That's a connect. I call it a connect. There's a reason for a follow-up, something to follow up on. Now, for me, it's real simple. And in Teamsy, we define this real simple. We have a share. We have a thing called a share that you log, right? You share your business opportunity or you share a product solution. That's it. So if you've done that, that's a reason to follow up. The follow-ups list is your pipeline. And I know some of you guys have a sales background, so you get this idea of the pipeline. The follow-ups list is your pipeline. These are the people who are interested in Arbon. They're interested. Your other list, your prospects list, those are relationships. Those are people you're building a relationship with. You're bantering with them. You're building trust with them. And while, while you're doing that, you're going to uncover the people who are interested. 
Okay, so as you uncover the interested people, you're going to share with them and they're going to go over to the follow ups list. Does this make sense? So let me just real quick, let me just real quick, I don't have a slide for this, but this is a really important concept. So if you're taking notes, just write these four points down. If you want to be build your business, you have to be in a state of momentum. There's our business can only be built from a state of momentum. There's no other way to build it. You can't slow and steady this business. Have you noticed that? Why? Because people quit. If you slow and steady this business at the end of the year, you might have recruited seven people and you'll still have the same size team because people quit. So you can't slow and steady. You want to build this business, it's got to have momentum. There's four daily actions you need to be doing to be in a state of momentum. And if you guys haven't figured it out yet, these are the four things Teams is designed to make you do on a daily basis. Okay, the first thing you need to be doing every day is creating conversations. Creating conversations. The second thing you need to be doing on a daily basis is continuing conversations. So these are conversations you already started. Continuing conversations towards a share. Okay, and remember a share is sharing the business opportunity or a product solution. So continuing conversations toward a share is a second activity. The third activity is following up on shares. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The third activity is sharing. Third activity is sharing. And the fourth activity is following up on shares. So starting conversations, continuing conversations toward a share is number two. Number three is sharing. And number four is following up on shares. If you're doing those things daily, and this is exactly what Teamsy has you do in a power hour, you are going to convert people every month, either customers or consultants or both. Are you with me? And it's real simple. You just keep your focus on these things. This is true of any business. You guys, this is true of any business. There's a, I consult, my, my original industry was real estate. Do I have any real estate professionals? So real estate uh, is where I started coaching and consulting. I consult with some of the larger, uh, some of the most successful boutique real estate firms here in Southern California. And it's the same principles, same four things they need to be doing to build their business. This isn't just for us. Does this make sense? Okay, so let's get back to Teamsy. We're gonna get to the follow-up. All right, real quick. <laughs> when I say real quick, you know it's not true, don't you? <laughs> it's just to encourage me that I'm gonna get there, really. So there's no follow-ups. How do I get to a follow-up? So. Just to give you an example, we messaged Carly at the beginning of our power hour, just a hello message. She thought it was sweet and responded, right? Great to hear from you, Eric, something like that. So now what happens is, oh my gosh, she responded. What do I do, Eric? So now just have a normal conversation. Don't overthink this. Pretend you're in person. Just have a conversation. Like, how have you been? What have you been doing? How's your family, right? Just have a normal conversation with them. So um, just a little just a little phrase that I found works really great. I'll share it with you guys, which is, um, what have you been up to? Send me an update, right? What have you been up to? Send me an update. Just something simple. I mean, you know, you add a little spice to it. Like, how was your Christmas? Send me an update. <laughs> Do anything fun over the long weekend? Send me an update. You get the idea. Like, so what this is psychologically is you've asked a question that's easy to answer. And then you've given them instructions on how to answer it. It takes the weirdness out. When you ask an open-ended question, it's weird. It's like this weird, awkward pause, right? So you ask an open-ended question and then you give the instruction. It makes people comfortable. So how's, how are things going? Good, right? Send me an update. Oh, I know how that is. I know how to do an update. So that gives them structure. So what happens is people will tell you about what's going on in their life and you have lots of things to talk about now. So just have a conversation and get to know them a little bit and just enjoy it, right? Just enjoy, it's enjoyable connecting with people, right? How many of you feel disconnected because of all this COVID mayhem? So now it's a chance to get connected with people again and have a great conversation. Now, what we're doing in this conversation is we're listening for ways to help, okay? So write that down, listen for ways to help. So I'm talking to Carly, we're messaging back and forth. You know, if this was real world, you know, we're eight hours apart on time zones, this might take several days for this conversation to go back and forth, right? No big deal because, you know, but we're continuing it on, just kind of bantering back and forth, getting to know each other a little bit. And I'm looking for ways to help her. Now, it may have nothing to do with my Arvon business. It might just be, I hear something she needs help with, right? I know there was one client I worked with for years. We were talking and he told me that he sleeps three hours a day. This is just an example. 
He sleeps three hours a day. Is that crazy? How many of you guys would just couldn't ever do that? He sleeps three hours. He's, his whole life sleeps three hours a day. I was like, wow, that's crazy. So I went on, you know, I went online and found a book that helps people get better sleep. And I sent it to him and said, hey, it was great chatting with you. Just a little something that made me think of you with a little note. He thought that was the most amazing thing ever. Does this make sense? So it was a way to help him. Maybe she's complaining that there was a big storm and the roof, she's got a leak in her roof. And I know a great roofing company. Like that's a way I can help her. Oh, I know a great roofing company. Let me send you their number. Does this make sense? It may not have anything to do with Arbonne, but she's also going to tell me stuff that's going to help me, um, you know, help her solve problems with Arbon products or with the business solution based on what she's telling me. So um, I just wanted to put that in there. Listen for ways to help. So here is how people always ask me, Eric, how do you, how do you tell them about your business without being totally cheesy? Well, first of all, I want you guys to understand something. If you're active on social media, they know about your business. They should, right? So it's kind of there. So they're kind of just waiting for it, right? They're kind of waiting for this to come up in the conversation sometimes if you're just having a nice conversation. So I'm going to just tell you guys really quickly how to talk about your business in a way that is not icky. And it's these two things that you want to share. You want to share what you do specifically. Like, I don't want to hear stuff like, I empower women through the dynamic forces of, of, unleashing their inner potential. Like, no, I want you to say, I work with this company named Arbon. Have you heard of them? They're amazing. And tell them wh one, what you do, why you're passionate about it. What is it about Arbon that makes you passionate? What's your favorite part? Share that. It's different for every single one of you. Does this make sense? Because what happens is you share in conversation. So it's like, oh, you know, I'm talking to Carly. She sends me her update on what's going on, how her holidays were great. I'm going to reciprocate by telling her what's going on with me. That is normal. So, oh my gosh, here's what my family is doing. This is what we're up to. And I'm also going to tell her about my business because that's part of my life. So I'm going to say, did I tell you I started my own home-based business? Yeah, it's with a company called Armon. It's amazing. And I love them because, right, it helped me so much doing this. Now I get to pay it forward, helping other people do that, right? So I'm telling her what I'm passionate about. And I guarantee you guys, if you explain to somebody what you're doing and why you're passionate about it, 100% of them will be excited for you. They're going to be proud of you. Right? Now, how many of you wish you could go back in time and have all your friends and family be excited and proud of you for starting this business? It's just in the approach. The reason why they weren't is because most of them felt like you were coming after them for something. So when you just tell somebody what you're doing and why you're passionate about it, it's non-threatening. They're excited for you. Okay. And this is the most uh, natural way to uncover their interest because she's saying, oh my gosh, that's so cool, Eric. Good for you. That's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, it has been awesome, right? So agree with them being excited for you and just say, you know, you, I say awesome a lot, clearly, but you can use whatever words you want. But um, I would just say something like, yeah, and if you'd ever like to learn more about it or know anybody who'd benefit from it, just let me know. I'll get, I'll get more information your way. Okay. That's it. If you'd ever like to learn more about it, let me know. You'd be amazed how many people are like, yeah, it is intriguing. I think I might want to learn a little bit more about it. I've been watching you on social. I see what you're, you're right. Does this make sense? A lot of people though will say, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Great. Perfect. Man, that is perfect. You, they didn't reject you. They didn't tell you to go away. They didn't tell you they didn't want to be friends anymore. They said, that's awesome. I love what you're doing and I'll keep it in mind. That is a great first conversation. Are you guys with me? Then what happens when they come up on Teamsy in three months? Hey, it's been three months. What the heck have you been up to? Let's connect again. They're like, oh, okay. Guess what? They, they will be more interested next time. Guarantee it. Because after that, after that chat, which nobody bothers to chat them up, it's very rare. They're going to go to all your social pages. They're going to start liking your posts. They're going to get more engaged with you because you invested in them. Does this make sense? Are you guys with me? Okay, so fast forward. I'm over delivering. Carly says, yeah, I'd like some more information. Great. Let's get, let's jump on a Zoom, FaceTime, whatever is easiest for you, Carly. Let's, let's get face-to-face. -face. Let's just have a quick chat. I want to find out what you need, what your goals are, and see if it's something I can help with. She says, great. So we jump on a Zoom, chit-chat a little bit. I present to her, Arvin. I show her the whole thing. Um, she's excited, right? She's excited. She's like, yeah, I'm excited. Tell me what I need to do. Great. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to, I say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you everything you need to get signed up. I'll check in with you tomorrow. 
see if you have any questions. She says, perfect. So how do I log this in Teams and get her on my follow-ups list? Why do I need her on my follow-ups list? Because there's an 80% 80, 80 chance she's not going to actually do what she said she's going to do today. It might even be higher than 80%. I'm being, I'm being merciful with the 80%. So what I'm going to do in Teamsy, because she's not on my list, just real quick, and then we'll do q and I'm going to look her up. By looking her up, it brings me to her record in Teamsy. You guys see that? There's her record. I'm going to click on Connect so I can open up that Connect box like what was on the dashboard. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to, the Zoom in Teamsy is, is video chat because there's lots of different types, right? So I'm just going to put in here all the notes from our Zoom. And I always tell people I want to know their goals. So I'm going to write all her goals. Why do I want to know her goals? Because I want to know what she needs. You can't just go, here's everything we do. Pick what you like, right? You have to help solve their problems. That's what sales is, is helping people solve their problems. What are your goals? What do you need to achieve? Why do you need to achieve that? What do you know? Is it money? Is it, is it health? What is it? Let's figure it out and let's, just, let's get a solution together. Make sense? Now, what happens is when I log this, I don't want to log it as a regular connect. See where it says share on the bottom left? I'm going to click on that because I want to log this as a share because on this conversation, we didn't just chat about kids and babies and all that fun stuff. <laughs> we chatted about business opportunity. Okay. So as soon as I tag that as a share, it automatically puts her on the follow up. So see that it, it toggled for two days from now. That's kind of the default. If you click on it, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to make it tomorrow and then log it. So now what happened was you see on her record, this has my original connect, it has our uh, the Zoom logged, and then the follow-up is scheduled. Let me go to the dashboard so I can show you what this looks like. On the dashboard, you can see I have a share logged, see that? And if I go to my follow-ups list now, instead of none, it says Carly due tomorrow. So tomorrow when I do my power hour, you guys, I do my prospects, whoever's up next, I connect with them, make their day, my customers make their day, my consultants make their day. Then I go to my follow-ups list, I see Carly's due and I send her a follow-up message. Now, let me just show you how easy this is, okay? You don't have to spend a lot of time on the follow-up. It's very easy. You go to scripts, just like we've been doing, and you get a follow-up script. Here's how you find them. They're called follow-up, <laughs> right? Easy. Take the first one off the list because they're numbered in order. Follow-up number one. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay, so let me copy that script. So we talked about building trust. I always tell people when you'll follow up, put it in Teamsy and then do it. When you follow up, when you say you're going to, it's, it's a deposit in the trust bank. It's like, wow, they keep their promises, right? That's why I worded this, checking in like I promised I would. Because what we want to do is we want to take following up out of being a nag and make it a promise to a friend that you've kept. Does that make sense? It's a philosophical change. I'm checking in like I promised I would. I'm keeping a promise to a friend. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay, so now it's ready to go. I'm going to go send it to her so you guys can see how easy this is. I got all your pages there in my follow up. Look at that. Okay, paste that in there. Great. See, follow up done, real time, log it. Now, what happens when you log a follow up? Teamsy says, okay, did this complete the follow up you had scheduled? Yes, I did, but I want to add a new one. I'm going to follow up now, let's say Thursday. I'm just picking a date in the future. Great. Next time is going to be follow up two. Just so you guys know, when I write F U two, it means follow up number two. <laughs> to note to myself, that's a little, little funny. Okay, create that. So now it's like, okay, I'm completing today's follow up and scheduling a new one. Complete. So now you can see she's on my follow-ups list for Thursday. I don't have to think about her again. I've sent the message. She's on my follow-ups list. So each day you come into Teams, eat prospects, customers, consultants, follow-ups. Okay. As you share with people, you log those shares, get them on your follow-ups list. That's the system. And it just flows. Does this make sense? It just flows. Now real quick on follow-ups. And then I'm going to do Q&A because, oh, bless you guys. You guys hung in there. Carly, are you amazed they're still here? I've been talking a long time. They're still here. Okay. Follow-ups is where the magic happens and you need to follow up enough. You need to follow up enough. Okay. So here's the, here's the part nobody really wants to hear. 80% of all sales occur between the seventh and 10th follow-up. 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up, which means I want you to be prepared to follow up 10 times. 
with everyone who you've shared with. Now, you don't have to follow up 10 days in a row. I mean, you space them out a little bit, right? Put a few days and maybe even a week in between them after, as you go down the road, but you keep them on that follow-ups list, okay? You keep touching them. I want you guys to understand this. Statistically, they're going to take longer. 80% of them will take longer. 20% of the people you talk to will sign up in the first three days. For many people in our business, they're only getting that 20%. What a waste. Okay? So Teamsy makes this so easy. You just keep following up, keep following up, keep following up every month. You'll be surprised who signs up this month. Some of those people you're like, oh, that person, they're not responding. But here's what I want you guys to understand is that most people won't respond to your follow-ups. You're going to get nothing back. Crickets. You're going you're, you're to be like, man, I don't understand. She was so excited when I talked to her. And here I'm following up, nothing, 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 nothing. I would say most people don't even respond to the first five or six follow-ups, which is way more than most people in our business even send. They don't respond at all. And then what you guys will do is you'll start creating stories to explain it. Oh, it's the economy. Her husband's a jerk. You know, uh, she's not interested, whatever. Those are your stories. Here's what's really happening. You messaged her. She was excited. She's driving the car. Can't respond. You messaged her. She's excited. She's in the middle of a di diaper change. You met, right? Her life is happening. And she misses the responses. She's busy. And you're different. Like she's got her life. Arvon is a new thing. It's not part of her normal life yet. So she's just doing her thing. But here's what will happen. If you keep up with the follow-ups, you guys, six or seven follow-ups in, they'll respond with, thank you so much. I'm so glad that I'm so sorry I didn't respond. Thank you so much for staying in touch. Okay. So one thing about the follow -up, how many of you guys are really, let me just see your hands again. If you are concerned that following up 10 times, you'll be a nag. <laughs> the honest people's hands go up. Okay, that was perfect. Okay, so real quick on this, just want to shift your mindset. How many of you are in this business to help people? <laughs> Everybody, good. How many of you believe that your products are life-changing? Business plans life-changing? So you're here to change lives. Okay, if somebody's interested, but they haven't signed up or purchased, how much, how can you change their life? You can't, they don't have it yet, right? The only thing you can do, the only thing you have to, comp to finish your promise, which is, hey, I'm gonna help you, is to follow up with them. The follow-up is the only tool you have to help them right now. Does this make sense? This is why I like to say this, following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. It's not a nag, it's an act of love. And you need to come from that place. Now, if you use my scripts, they're not gonna get annoyed because they follow some principles that, I call them the anti-annoying principles. Just use those follow-up scripts in there. You can change them a little bit, but keep them pretty much there. They won't be annoyed, okay? But following up is an act of love. If you follow up with somebody three or four times and they don't respond and you stop following up because you're annoyed with them, what you've communicated to them is, I didn't care about you from the beginning, sorry. How many of you guys are parents? Let me see the parents raise my, my hands. Parents, okay. How, can you imagine if you put yourself in this hypothetical situation? I'm laughing because you've all been through this. You tell your kids, brush your teeth. Okay. And they don't do it. Does it ever happen? So then the next morning you say, okay, you need to brush your teeth. Did you brush your teeth? Of course not. Go brush your teeth. And then at night you tell them to brush your teeth, like maybe five or six times each time to get, get them to do it, right? Can you imagine on fun day three, just forget it. You're ignoring me. Just forget it. Let your teeth fall out. Would you do that? Of course not. Because you love your kids. You know, they need it. They need those teeth, right? You got to love your clients the same way, your customers the same way. You just understand just because we're 25, 35, 45, 55, we're not, the, we're not different people. We're the same people that need to be told by our parents 25,000 times to brush our teeth. Are you with me? And the reason why we still, let me see those smiles. Ah, everyone still has them because someone loved you enough to keep after you. Make sense? Okay. Okay, wait, I have, I have, uh, I have to close it out and then we'll do q and I could keep teaching all night. You guys know I love this stuff. Okay, let me go in here real quick, which is pretty cool. All right, we already had this slide. So let me just skip through this. So just kind of recap what you get with Teamsy for those of you using it, full-fledged CRM, but with the Power Hour module, 
built in that organizes your time and day. You'll never spend more time in Team Z, as much time in Team Z as you have with me today. I promise you, you'll be much faster. Okay. You'll be able to find every contact, every customer, every conversation. It's all logged in there. You'll have your intelligent module to crush your power hours every day, be able to view and track all your leads, get your team motivated. Oh my gosh. I didn't even get to show you this, but Carly, if we have time in Q&A and you want to see the team report, it's unreal. You could actually, everyone on this team that wants to could share their stats with you and you could have leaderboards of who's working. It's pretty cool. Um, track your performance as you go. It's just really awesome. All the different things that the tool does for you. Keep in mind the scripts library is built in for you. So if you're new or if you're not sure how to do this, you could just use those scripts. After about a year of using my scripts, you'll never need them again. You guys will be so good at connecting. You won't need mine, which is pretty cool. But they're designed for Facebook Messenger, text, um, any type of touch point that you're going to use. There's a collection of conversation starters for staying in touch, your follow-ups, reconnecting. Um, also, you can create your own and save them in Teamsy. So your own are there to grab, which is pretty cool. Um, also, I just wanted to point out, has this training been helpful? Have you guys found it helpful? The only thing I have to gauge on is that everybody's still here. So that's good. But I love to teach. I love to train. As you know, as I said, I'm a business coach by trade, computer geek as a secondary career. But um, one of the things that we've included in Team Teamsy has a whole university section where we have training courses, many of which you can pay extra money for, right? But this one, the ultimate mindset training suite that I'm showing you right now, it's in Teamsy as part of your subscription. So when you have Teamsy, you get this for free. And it's it's really great training. It's going to show you how to set your goals. How many of you have already written out all your goals for 2022? Probably a lot of you still need to do this. So this is a great training. I call it goal training, goal setting on steroids. If you're my age, you get that. Some of you, some of you look so youthful, but I don't know. It might just be Arbon. Maybe you're, maybe you're my age. You just look younger. That's probably what it is. But the point is, is that we're going to teach you how to set BHAGs. Those are your big, hairy, audacious goals. The ones you're spouse laughs at when you say out loud, right? Because they're so big. We're going to teach you how to make smart goals, set smart goals, which are the goals that you will achieve in the, this year, 2022. Um, and we'll also help you understand what your personal business standard is. A business owner has a personal business standard. Now, how many of you have been employees or had a job work for somebody else? Yeah. So your employer sets the standard for what they expect from you, don't they? But as a self-employed business owner, you have to set the standard for what you need to do. Make sense? So we'll teach you that. We'll also teach you how to find your why. I believe the reason why people quit at 50% a year is the average rate in our industry is because they don't know their why. They don't know the emotional reason behind their motivation. Does this make sense? So what's the point? If you don't know why, I mean, like it's easy to quit, right? And we'll show you, um, teach you more about relationship marketing. So that's included in there. I just wanted to highlight that. You guys can, can go through that. They have downloadable workbooks and everything. So I'm going to give you some action steps really quick. And then we'll do Q&A. For anybody who wants to ask questions, um, what we'll do is I'll just let you guys unmute and, and talk to me. Okay, so action steps. Go to teamsy.com, start your 14-day free trial if you haven't already done that. Okay, so go to teamsy.com, start your 14-day trial. If you're already in a free trial, set up your subscription so you don't miss a beat because what will happen at 14, day 14 is it just turns off, right? So make sure you get in there and set it up once you get in there and start using it so you don't miss a beat. Um, <clears throat> we have a special pricing offer for Arbonne right now, which is pretty awesome. It's one third off. So if you start a subscription now, you can lock that price in forever. We, we won't raise it on you, right? We'll just raise prices for new people. So just to give you an idea on pricing, we're an American company, so we price in US dollars. This is really good for you guys right now because our currency is taking a beating. <laughs> so there's a discount right now on American dollars and that beating, I, I, I believe those beatings will continue. But so uh, Teamsy is $29.99 US dollars a month, okay, for the subscription, unlimited access, less than a dollar a day. Now, right now with a special deal, it's going to be $19.95 a month, okay? So you can lock that in. So you will see that translate to your currency. On a monthly basis, it'll fluctuate a little bit. But like I said, right now, dollars are really cheap. We've had like 20% inflation this year in this country. It's crazy. Okay, <laughs> so take advantage of that. The next thing I want you guys to do is join the Teamsy Community Facebook group. So when you go into Teamsy, you'll see a community button. Join that group. It's a great place to, to, to just search questions and things and, and meet people and talk to people about what's going on. And I'm in there pretty regularly too. Last action step, or not second to last action step. I always have a lot of action steps. I want you to get a 30-day success partner. Okay, so 
get a 30 day success partner. And let's say, let's do team Z for 30 days, hold each other accountable. Okay. Because you can come in and use it and not really use it. So you get actually groups of three partners is even the best. You call them partners. I guess you would three partners, get three partners. That's the best. And what I want you guys to do is every day when you're done with your Teamsy power hour, screenshot Teamsy and message it to each other. Okay. So what'll happen is one of you will do it. Two of you won't. The other two will be super annoyed because now, now you feel pressure to get it done because of the accountability and you'll get it done. The accountability is how we succeed. So get some accountability partners, try this out together, right? Maybe Carly, maybe, maybe team wide, you guys might want to do a challenge or something, get everybody engaged and accountable because here's what I will tell you. This works 100% of the time. If you apply yourself to it. Okay. You just need to get in there and get after it. So I'm going to give you one more challenge to really help you guys get there. This is my five day challenge. I challenge you guys. How many of you guys like, like challenges? I challenge you guys to use Teamsy for five days in a row, just five days in a row. And I want you to message 100 people over five days. Just mess, just 100 outgoing messages. Make your day messages, okay? So 20 a day for five days. The reason why I want you to do this is because I know that if you do it, it's going to just kind of blow up your phone, blow up your life, blow your mind. <laughs> okay? Why do I want to do that? It's not because I want to torture you guys. I want you to viscerally feel how you can create momentum in your business at any time, okay? And we create momentum first by creating conversations. Make sense? Because what happens in this business is we go through peaks and valleys like any business, and then we fill in the valleys with BS stories, right? Can I say that? You guys, you guys use BS, right? Okay, so we fill them in. We say, oh, the economy's slow or people, it's a weird time of year, it's the holiday season or nothing's happening. I tapped out my warm market. Like we create these stories that aren't true. Here's what I will tell you, five days in a row with Teamsy, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how many people responded. I can barely hold my phone, it's so hot. Does this make sense? I want you to experience that because then you know you have that power within you all the time. Teamsy is not magic. It's just facilitating the connection between you and the other people you know. Does this make sense? And it's doing it so it doesn't take your whole day. So hopefully that, that helps. Okay, you guys, guys got those action steps? All right. Now let's do, for anybody who has questions, I'm going to hang out to ask the question. I know there's a lot of people, but we'll do our best to do it organized. Just unmute your microphone. You have the ability to unmute, ask away, and I'm happy to help anyone. Hi, Eric. Hello. Just, Hi. Um, I don't have um, a computer. I have an iPad and a very old iPhone. So can I use that app on my iPad? Absolutely, you can use the app on your iPad. Um, the only thing you won't be able to do on an iPad is do a bulk import of contacts. So maybe on, okay. like the, maybe on the first setup, um, you might wanna borrow a friend's laptop or something, log into your account and do some of those bulk imports. So for example, if you wanted to import, you know, uh, lists from the Armand back office, you would need a regular computer to do that. Or if you wanted to like grab all your Facebook friends or something like that. So, um, but once you've done those bulk imports, you don't need a computer for anything. You can use your phone, you can use an iPad, whatever you need. Okay, and when they reply to all the messages that I'm sending out to all my contacts and I'm going to get a rush of replies, yep. can I, do I answer on my phone or do you go back into Teamsy and use that to answer? No, you can answer on your phone. You'll have Teamsy on. You just log into Teamsy on your phone too. Right. Okay. That's fine. Thank yep. you. Sure thing. Can I ask two questions? Of course. Really quickly. Thank you so much, by the way. That was so, so good. Um, I feel so excited to do activity. I feel like I'm, is anyone else like buzzing? I feel like I want to speak, speak to everyone else that I've, I've ever spoken to, but that's actually my question. So, you know, when you get these moments of like, I want to speak to everyone I've ever met right now. And you kind of do your messages and you get excited do you recommend sticking to the number that you suggest based on the goals though or you know like if you go to a training and you're like i've just messaged 50 people in a day do you recommend those big bursts or do you think just stick to my six um that is a great question i love it um i would say it's better to be consistent over time there's a couple reasons first you need to get that consistent habit going 
you don't want it to be like a binge type business, right? You want it to be consistent. But the, the other reason is you will get overwhelmed. You send 50 messages in a day and all 50 reply. You're, it's like you're spinning too many plates. Does that make sense? So I'll tell you guys the story. I, I don't, I, this story happened to me. So I was so excited to have Teensy. I had built a similar software for real estate before I got into direct sales and I saw how it really helped those people. So I wanted something like that for Teensy where it told me who to connect with, right? And um, I was so excited. I, I was the only person who had it in the world. I had like the first version and my, my engineers had got my Facebook friends imported in Teamsy. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I got social media people in Teamsy. So I, so I went in and I did a power hour and I messaged 43 people. So not even, not even 50, Carly, just 43. And I probably would have done more, but my son, who was three years old at the time, came in and, you know, pulled me out of my office, which at that time was a wooden shed in my backyard. <laughs> but um, so I just sent 43 messages and I went and played with my son. And then I looked over at my phone and it was just like vibrating off the table, right? I had 100% response rate. 100% response rate. And I was doing all I could to keep up with these messages. My wife was irritated with me. She's like, you've been on your phone 24 seven. Like, oh my gosh, this works. And I actually, I, I, I don't know if it's on my desk. I had it on my desk recently because I showed it, but I was, I was brand new in the business. Nobody knew who I was. I, I wasn't a known person. I wasn't like you, Carly, where I had earned accolades and stuff. Nobody knew who I was, but that month I, I ranked in one of the, as one of the top people in the company for new customers and new sponsors. And I got a personal handwritten card from the CEO of the company. And I always show like, that was the week I tested Teamsy. Isn't that incredible? But some of you are like, then I want to message 50, but I will tell you, it was like hair on fire busy. If you do, if you do like 15 or 20 a day, then you can kind of keep up with those conversations better, if that makes sense. But I will say this, which is, I think you guys should do periodically like twice or three times a year, you should do what we call a sprint where you do for like a 30 day period, you get together as a team and you really go crazy, right? To create momentum. We do these with Teamsy. I, I host these boot camps that are two month boot camps that people can sign up for. We do these throughout the year. And that's what that is. It's like a two month sprint, but we don't expect you to live at that level forever. If that makes sense. So there's one that question I over answered. Sense. No, it's good. It's because I, I know what happens is that lots of people, myself included, get really excited. You set yourself up for failure almost because you do these massive numbers. And then, like you say, three weeks in, you end up changing your system because you're like, I can't keep up with it and it doesn't work. So, yeah, that's very, very cool. And then the other question I want to say is, you know, we were talking about um, importing um, Instagram contacts and stuff like that. Yes. Obviously, on Instagram, the people that you follow in your contacts as such are a lot less personal. Like I follow random people that I really don't know at all. Do you yeah. still think it's beneficial to have to import 3000 people that you're following or, or even more than that sometimes? Or do you think add them? Because I was thinking maybe I should just add them. You know, when you say add two people a day, yes. I was thinking maybe I could go at my story and add the people that are following my story. At least I know that they're like good people. What do you think? Yes, yes. Um, okay, so there is a way to import all of your followers from Instagram. But to your point, for many people who are very active on Instagram, it's a massive list. And, you know, you can, you can really manage... I would say like maybe 5,000 relationships can be managed in Teamsy realistically, right? So, um, and, I've, and I, have, I have had big leaders who have many more than that, but they have assistants and other people managing that list with them. So one person working in Teamsy an hour a day could probably manage 5,000 relationships. So just keep that in mind, right? So if you have 20,000 followers, it's like you've already broken the system, right? So what I would say is, um, what exactly what you said, which is bring them in as you engage with them. So as the, the people who are engaging with you, add them to Teamsy. And um, I actually talked about, I did this, this training on using tags um, because I knew a lot of people were using Instagram to meet people, right? And to create new relationships. And so what, what people have done, which is really successful is they've taken, they've, they've met people on Instagram, which is like, you know, like you barely, barely know each other, right? And they've brought them into Teamsy with a tag, like Instagram lead, like it's a tag. And then they've tried to interact with them. And if they succeed in interacting, then they keep them, 
right? So some people come in for a week or two and then come out because they weren't able to engage. But the idea is that as you're like, that's perfect. People engaging with your stories, add them to Teamsy, try to have a conversation, see who will engage and keep the ones who engage. Does that make sense over time? Um, and then you're, then you're putting in really good quality starting kind of relationships. Um, <clears throat> but there is a way for those of you guys who are on Instagram, maybe you have uh, a thousand or 500 followers, you can import that whole list really easy. Um, there's instructions in the Teams he helps on how to do it. We actually built, when we built the Chrome extension to import Facebook, it was, we had built it to import Instagram too, but there's like a little security thing in the code for Instagram that only allows you to pull a thousand contacts. So if you had 5,000 people on Instagram, it would only bring over a thousand, but it, but it's random. So it's like a thousand random out of your, it was weird. So I just had them turn that off, but you can go through and export the list and import it. It's real easy. If that makes sense. I have a question. Yes. Sorry, it's Elisa over here. And um, what I wanted to ask is you say, keep the ones that engage. What I want to ask is at what point do you give up on the ones that aren't engaged? Obviously you've got the, the 10 follow-up rule and everything yeah. like that, but at what point are you just like, right, you're getting on my nerves now? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, I got another story for you. So um, uh, it's telling me my internet connection's unstable. Hopefully we don't lose you guys. So I, I used to, you know, I come from the real estate industry. And then when I got into direct sales and was building my business, a lot of my contacts were people I knew from my other professional industry. And that's probably true for a lot of you guys too. And so there was this one guy in particular who was a real estate investor, lived on the other side of the States for me. We'd met at a couple of conferences and I started messaging him and he didn't respond. Right. So like, Hey man, how's it been? Nothing. And then he came up every three months, right. In DMZ. So every three months I'd send him another message, send him nothing. And like the fourth time he came up. So now it's a year. I thought, should I even bother? I mean, he's not responding, but here's what, but here's what I thought to myself. I said, what the heck? It's going to take me two seconds. I sent him another message. Like it's no skin off my teeth to send him a message. Right. Then he responded. So it took a year for him to respond to hello. But what was interesting about this guy was he said, Hey man, sorry, I haven't responded. Um, but I appreciate the messages and I've been to your website. I've been following you on social media and I'm ready to get started. I hadn't even talked to him. But what happened was just by me sending the messages was piquing his interest. He didn't want to chit chat. Sometimes guys are like that, right? But he, but he was investigating things and he knew exactly what he wanted. He knew exactly what package he wanted. I mean, it was really interesting, right? And so I, you, not, that's not true for everybody. My point is that it's going to take you two or three seconds to send a message. Sometimes it's worth just keeping them in there for a while and seeing what happens, right? So just keep them in there. But what you can do is you can, you can downgrade them to like a three star every three months or a two star every four months, right? You can deprioritize them a little, but keep them in the flow. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. I think sometimes with Instagram, the problem is that people just suddenly stop using it. And you're like, are they even active? They haven't posted for the past three months or whatever. And you just wonder, is it, is it just wasting time? Right. And then all of a sudden you, they go, oh, I just got your message from six months ago, right? Out of the blue. That happens. And I will admit, I'm like that with Instagram. You know, I, um, I get in there and then it goes months <laughs> before I get back in. So who's next? I have a question. Oh, sorry, Ruth. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I go first, Ruth. <laughs> I keep missing it. Um, so um, my question is, I actually have um, another business and I would like to manage both of my businesses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously my, um, I might want to have slight, you know, slightly different goals in terms of contacts. Can I do that within the same account? Yes. Well, well what, what people have done is we have a really simple tagging system in Teamsy. And so the tags allow you to create subgroups. So what I would do is, okay, so for the people that are in the, that are leads for the other business, I would tag them with that. Okay. So then as they're coming up in your, in your power hour, when you, you can quickly just look at what tags they have and you know what business they are. 
this, right. this would allow you to actually do a power hour where you're doing both businesses, right? But, um, but also the tags allow you to pull that just that list. That just that list. Right. So okay. you could go in and pull that list and say, oh, I'm just going to work in business B today. And you could go through your tag list and work it. The tags are really powerful because you can do all kinds of things with it, right? If you're, if you're having an yeah. event, you could tag everybody you've invited to the event. You can, right. then you can pull that list and you can message them just about that event and stay in touch with your reminders without being through your power hour, right? Then you can go through okay. and you can tag everyone who came to the event. And then you come through and you go, next time you have an event, you, you go to everybody who you invited who didn't come to the last one. And so the tags really help you to refine your list as time goes on. But that okay. Happens. But if I'm contacting those people, is that going to skew my figures on my, on my, um, on my dashboard? Yes. So do your, okay. do your power. Do my first. First. Yep. Get your, hit your goals and then everything's gravy. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a question. Um, it's Ruth, Ruth, Ruth speaking. Hi, very quickly, I'm just wondering about LinkedIn, if I yeah. can get my contacts over from LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. There's, in, there's instructions on how to do it in the Teamsy Help Center, step-by-step -step instructions. It's pretty easy. You go to LinkedIn, they allow you to export it as a file, and then you can import that file right into Teamsy. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Eric. Sorry, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for giving all your time and energy. And I think we're all absolutely buzzing that we've got. I use Teams, but I've not been using it to the extent that it can be used. So I've learned so much tonight. Thank you. Good. So could you, is there a short, you know, you've got some of the short videos on the website. Yeah. Is there, I know you've got some for different companies on how to get the back office imported. I, I just can't quite figure out how to get my team onto the. Um, yeah, you know, who, I know you guys know Kim. Oh Kim, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she made a video there. for she made a video for 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 Arvon and and it's in our help center. Okay, right. I'll message Kim. Perfect. So, but it, if you go to the Teamsy Help Center, her video is there on how to do how oh, to do it's it. It's on your website. Yeah, it's on our website too. Amazing. So you'll Thank find you so it. Uh, I can show you. Guys. Well, it, it's there. You'll see it. It's there. So if you go into how to, well, I'll just show you what the heck. Save you the trouble. So you're in Teamsy, you're gonna to go to Help Center. See this right here? This is where you guys are gonna to go to learn everything. Help Center. Now, I also want you to know, we have a, we have a full-time professional staff who will help you. So um, if you click on this help button, you can ask a question from a live human and they'll, via email, they'll answer it. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with somebody on my team so they can, they can share screens and walk through stuff with you. Okay, just so you guys know that's there. Um, but on the help center here, you're going to look at where it's like import my contacts from your back office. You're here, import my contacts from your back office. And then you're going to select this instructions for Arvon. Boom. And there's Kim's video. Hello, this is Kim Mallory here. Okay. So, oh, and perfect. She, Thank you so yeah. much. Well, what I loved about it, I mean, she's amazing. Um, I've had every interaction I had with her has been great, but she was like, um, I made a video for my team and it's, I think it's more helpful than what you guys have. And would you like it? I said, yes, please. Right. So yeah. it was really gracious of her to do that and to share it. And um, for everyone in the, in the, you know, everyone in Arvon worldwide yeah, that's brilliant. gets to benefit from it. So that was really cool. So next time you see her say, thanks for that. But if you run into any, listen, if you watch that video and you're still kind of like, I'm not sure what to do, please reach out and schedule a zoom with, the, with one of our team members, because I don't want you guys not using this because you're like, I'm intimidated about setting it up. Like you don't need to know how to set up Teamsy to be, to do, to rock this business. You only do that one time. So our team can do it for you if you need that. Just get it scheduled and get it over with and, and rock and roll. It's like moving into your dream home. Like some people move themselves and some people hire movers. You, either way, you want to get moved in and live in it, right? Okay. I think we might be it. Anyone else? We all good? Oh, I've got one um, to ask, actually. Um, I know that you don't have an app, so I've saved it on my home screen as a button. Um, but every time I come in and out of it, it resets itself. So I wondered, is there a way of it kind of saving? So, for example, um, 
like I've I've chosen someone to update but then I go back into my Facebook to copy the message or whatever it might be and when I come back to it it's kind of reset itself is yeah. there a way of saving the screen that I'm working on rather than resetting every time I go back into it yes okay so the biggest thing is hold on let me let me pull up my iPhone here so we can share it we can look at it together Okay, uh, there it is. Okay, there's my phone. All right, so in the middle of my screen, I know I've got a lot of stuff there, but if you look in the middle of my screen, you'll see Teamsy, the Teamsy logo. And so I've saved, just as you did, I saved the shortcut to the login page on my, because it's a mobile website, it's not an app. So when I click on that, it takes me right to the login page in Teamsy. And um, if, you, if you click on Remember Me, it'll keep you logged in most of the time, unless you log out like on your computer somewhere. Okay, so here's the Teamsy dashboard, okay? So if I'm gonna go, let's say I'm gonna message Nicole and I go to my scripts, I get my Facebook script for Nicole. Okay, copy my script. Okay, so now I want to go to Facebook and message her. So I would, I would toggle out and I would open Messenger, okay? So then I would go find Nicole. Do you guys see? See, so I would do it just like we're doing, you know, um, in the demo. I'm going to get a different Nicole just so I don't have to find her. But the idea here is then I would paste it here, right, in in uh, Messenger, and I would send it to her. Okay. So then what I want you to do is I don't want you to come back to the dashboard and press the Teamsy button again. Because, Jennifer, what that'll do is it'll take you back to the login page. Instead, I want you just to toggle back to Teamsy, which still has that screen open just where you left it. Brilliant, thank you. That's yeah, brilliant. so it's, I mean, I, I know it's obvious, but I wanted to show it to you because if you keep going, every time you hit that shortcut button, it's to your login screen. What we wanna do is just toggle apps. So it, I'm an iPhone, so it's Safari, right? Um, so just toggle between, or if you use a different, I, I use like, I'm a nerd. So I have like six browsers on my iPhone. I don't know, but. <laughs> I'm paranoid about, I don't want to get ads for everything. So I use all these different browsers for different things, but whatever browser you use Teamsy in on your phone, that's where you're going to toggle between that browser and your other apps for messaging. I love using Teamsy on my phone. I would say probably 90% of our users are on their phones, not, not desktops, because you've got your text messages, you've got your social media apps. It's just really easy to toggle between everything. Does that make sense? And now you know what to do. So it's going to be easy for you. All really right. helpful thank you any other questions before i send you hi there eric it's sharon hi. i don't actually have a question for you but i just want to say a massive thank you to carly for putting this call together this evening but a humongous thank you to you for actually creating something that's going to actually elevate all of our businesses so i can just see humongous growth ahead so just thank you ever so much you're welcome well thank you for your trust and welcome to our teamsy family hi Sorry, I just have one question and we'll let you go. Oh, it's great. Um, hi, it's Basha. Thank you so much for this training. It has been absolutely brilliant. I have been using Teamsy, but I've only been using probably 5% of what it's actually capable of doing. So I have a question about rating people. Mm -hmm. So rating our contacts. If you've covered it tonight, I don't think you have, but if I've missed it. So is there a quick way of rating our contacts after we've imported them yes that's i'm glad you asked that i used to show that in the in the demo but you know i talk too long so i have to cut stuff out okay let's find where do teams go thank you uh hold on a second it's weird how it does that sometimes it can't seem to find oh there it is okay all right so when you're in teamsy what you're gonna do basha is go to team okay so the team page is where everybody lives. So just to get your head around this, in relationship marketing, your team's not just your team. It's also your prospects. It's also your customers because they're your team. Get it? Okay. So everybody's here on the team page. So what we're going to do here is like if I scrolled, you'd see everybody there. But there is a way to quickly do the ranking and see these little dots right here, this little menu? Click that. And then you've got some different things you can sort the list by, but down here on options, one of them is rank mode, okay? 
So when I toggle rank mode, now it's made, just put everybody's stars there. So this is what you're gonna to wanna to do when you first set up teams, you just come into rank mode and you're gonna, everyone's gonna be three stars by default and you're, cause 90% will stay there. So what you're gonna do is go down and just cherry pick the ones that you think should be five stars, maybe four star, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna rank up the people you feel, you feel best about, okay? And prioritize them. Um, now, once you've done this once and you've ranked your list and you're ready to go, like this is like the, this is like a classic Netflix and chill activity. <laughs> sitting with your spouse, watching something dumb. Not that you guys do that. Do you guys ever watch dumb things? Yeah, you know, mindless and just going through teams and starring people, getting it done. Just get it done, okay? This isn't like a major chore, but once it's done and you're, and you're um, connecting with people, now you can change their, their ranks as they come up. Like Franchot comes up and I'm like, he's not a five. He should be a three. I can just change it right there. And then he disappears off my list, goes back another 60 days before he comes up again. So you can change as you go um, once you've done it the one time. Does that make sense? And the same thing if you're in, on the team page or on somebody's record and you're talking to them right here, you can see it's toggled. You can change their rank at any time once you're doing it. Now, the thing I didn't show you, which I'll show you while we're here in the same menu is the type mode. If you, if you put your people in without putting them, oh, these are my consultants and these are my customers, they all just came into one bucket you can now go type mode and you can quickly change people from customer bucket to consultant bucket or prospect bucket, whatever the case may be. Make sense? Otherwise you won't be in that mode. You'll just, as you're talking to somebody like Kathy, you change them right here just by clicking it. So when she, when she purchases, I click on customer. Now she's, on, now she's in the customer list. If she joins my team, I'll click consultant and personally sponsored. Simple. So easy. All right. Super helpful. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you so much, Eric. I think that's it for now. My God, we've had two hours of your time. It has honestly been so amazing. It's lit a whole new fire in me in terms of activity. And I just know exactly what I'm going to do. And I know exactly what to do tomorrow morning, sit down, do that. I know who I'm talking to, what I'm saying. And that is honestly gold. So thank you so, so much. It's been so valuable. I'm going to send out the recording as soon as we get it, because I know that people are going to re-watch this um, over and over again. But yeah awesome. just thank you again for your time thank you for creating it for us and we are gonna go and do amazing amazing things we're gonna get your average stats up thinking about yes. wow since, since that arbon call our stats went up people yes. are signing people up <laughs> i'll have to quote arbon separately that's what will happen yeah for which sure. is great well thank you so <laughs> much for having me i appreciate it god bless you guys welcome to the teamsy family and we're excited to be part of your success story have Amazing. A great night, Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.